Okay, let's take a look at the syllable level. Now, this is within phonological awareness. We think of syllable level is a little bit harder than hearing the similarities in words, like hearing how words have a similar beginning and ending and even middle sound. This is a, this is a little different. Here, we're going to take a word, and what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into its syllables. And let's define what a syllable is, okay? Let's think about what a syllable is. What is a syllable? So a syllable, let's, let's look at the definition here. It says a syllable is a part of a word that contains one vowel sound and it, it is its own unit. So we think of cat as a single syllable word. It only has one vowel sound. Or rabbit, it has two distinct vowel sounds, rabbit. Or wonderful, there are three distinct vowel sounds. Now, I don't need the print here to identify, isolate the syllables in these words. We could just clap it out. Like I could say to you uh, in spoken language, oral language, how many syllables do you hear in the word cat? And you'd be like, cat, or rabbit, rabbit. Or if I said the word wonderful, you'd clap out wonderful. There's no print that's necessary for this activity. To hear syllables, we often ask children to clap out the syllables in a word. Or sometimes we say, uh, clap out the syllables you hear in your name. Chris, I only hear one vowel sound. Okay, so now that we know what a syllable is, we can see that banana has those three unique vowel sounds. Banana, or watermelon has four. Watermelon. Now, I know I have these in a, a nice visual graphic on the, pa on the page here on your screen. But we don't need these pictures to help us with this. We can just, someone can just say banana and you could clap it out, banana or watermelon. You hear it, watermelon, and then you're like watermelon, four syllables, right? So these activities involving uh, segmenting the syllables in a word, this is intermediate phonological awareness. It doesn't require the actual word. Usually it could just require someone just orally saying it or showing you a picture and asking you to orally segment it into syllables, okay? So, not, and, and a lot of times you would see something like this, the teacher's talking and they give a, a, a syllable activity where they either say the word and the students clap it out. This is one of those activities that's very common. If you've taught preschool or pre-K or kindergarten, you've done this activity, right? You have asked students to clap out the syllables and words, yes? So this is a very, very, very common activity. This is this is like our friend. Remember our friend John? It's like clapping the syllables in a word, you know right away that is some type of phonological awareness activity, right? So if we ever saw anything like that in a question, right away you're thinking intermediate phonological awareness. Yes? Now you don't need this one right here, the teachers added in a picture and a word. You don't need the words for this activity. If you wanted to, it could become some type of uh, letter sound correspondence activity in addition to a phonological awareness activity, but you don't need the words. This can be done just with the pictures. Show a picture of a spider and the child claps it out. Spider, right? Cricket, cricket. So you don't necessarily need, that's just reinforcing these two. Letter sound correspondence um, um, reinforces the sounds, reinforce the print, the print reinforces the sound. So. So right now you don't necessarily need this. This can, what I'm trying to say is this activity of clapping out the syllables in a word, this can be a pure auditory sound activity, okay? All right, um, let's look at our first question. Now I'm gonna give you a minute. This is actually a little harder because this one has uh, two parts. So I'm gonna give you uh, real quickly, I'll give you a minute to read this over. Uh, do that now. On your mark, get set, pause me, go. Pause. You gotta you gotta read it to yourself. So make sure you pause and read. Unpause. Now I'm gonna talk about it with you. First thing I look at is the grade, pre-kindergarten. What's pre-kindergarten? Well, it could be our three to four year olds, it could be our four to five year olds. It's that range before kindergarten, right? And and you know, pre-kindergarten, if you were to ask me, I don't know, when I first started teaching, how old is a pre-kindergarten student? I wouldn't know. I don't know. I was teaching middle school. I had no clue, right? Uh, now that I have kids, 
uh, and uh, I'm much more associated with the ages. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely that that means something very specific, right? So I'm just gonna imagine here a pre kindergarten teacher is dealing with I don't know, let's say, uh, let's do uh, four. Okay, four year old. And in my mind, that is, I could picture a four year old. Okay, that's, that's, that is a lot of a lot of great. That's a great age. Okay. Now, this teacher who's working with a lot of four year olds, uh, she does circle time activities. A lot of teachers in this room do circle time or, or some type of circle time morning meeting activity every day. This is so important. So much goes on in, in circle time activities. Okay. Uh, it's the heart of the class in the beginning, the middle, the end of the class. Very important. There's some teachers in this class that don't do that at all. Middle school and high school teachers, they have no clue how important circle time activities are. But that's a thing, and it's it's really important. Okay, so we got this teacher, in uh, preschool, uh, pre-kindergarten teacher, uh, doing a circle time activity, and, and they're doing activities like the ones below. So let's just take the first one here. The teacher leads children in clapping the syllables of each classmate's names. Let's just circle that one. Isn't that like clapping out the syllables in a word? That's like our friend John, right? If if we were if we saw John and John, my friend John was clapping out the syllables in someone's name, John, Chris, um, um, Portia, right? We would know right away that that activity is associated with. Um, intermediate phonological awareness, where we're breaking down uh, a word into its syllable. We're taking the structure of a word and breaking it into its syllables. And it's a phonological awareness activity. Would you agree? Like right away, you spot your friend. This activity or the activities below are intermediate phonological awareness activities, all involving syllables. Yep. You hear that syllables? You can see it. And it's the clapping of the syllables in the name. So if you had a question involving clapping syllables and name, right away, you're thinking intermediate phonological awareness, right? Okay, so let's take the rest of the question. Uh, do me a favor, uh, make sure you read this in the next one minute and your mark it set, go, read it to yourself. <clears throat> Unread it, uh, you gotta read it to make this work. It says, according to convergent research, activities such as these are most effective in helping young children with what? So young children, right? That could be our, our three to four-year-olds or our four to five-year-olds, okay? That pre-kindergarten and even kindergarten, I would, I would even say young children would be kindergarten too, uh, five to six-year-olds. And it could even be older than that too, but these are just rough ranges right now, okay? How's it going to be helpful for this group of kids? Three to four, four to five, five to six, maybe a little older, maybe a little bit younger. How's it going to be helpful? Let's see. Is this going to involve recognizing that names have sounds that can be represented in letters of the alphabet? Is that what we're doing? Because that right there is basic. That is letter sound correspondence, right? Matching up letters with sounds. That is, that is a print thing. And it's also a sound thing. I think they're referencing the alphabetical principle there, but but either way, that is definitely a print and sound thing. And we're we are just doing a pure these activities here. There's no print, there's no names. It is just an um, these are all auditory activities, right? They are not um, spelling out the name, so there's no print in this, so it wouldn't be a. And guess what? It it wouldn't be. Let's see, it wouldn't be D either because it's not. It's not, again, it's not working with letter sound correspondence. We're not matching up letters and sounds in names. These are out. Yeah, can you see that? What about B and C? Well, B says discriminate individual phonemes, individual speech sounds. That's a phonemic awareness activity. So remember, on our levels, we have the, uh, we have the word level. The syllable level, the onset and rhyme level, and the phoneme level. Only at the phoneme level, the phonemic awareness level, are we working with individual phonemes in a word, discriminating 
ind or identifying an individual phoneme in a word. So example, cat. The word cat is made up of three distinct phonemes. K -a -t, right? So only at that level are we working with the individual phonemes. So right now we're not at that level. This activity is not a phonemic awareness activity. It's out. So what's our, what are we left with? I guess we're left with C. Building phonological awareness sensitivity by attending to the phonological structure of meaningful words such as names. You know, team, I have never, the, the child's name is probably the most important name, word they're ever going to have. That is a very meaningful word. If you're in preschool, you know how important it is for that child to first spell their word. That is the first word they get to practice spelling, right? And that's the first word where they practice letter sound correspondence. It always starts with the name, most of the time. It's a very meaningful and, and great word to practice with letter with early uh, alphabetical principle. Very important because the word that word carries so much meaning to them. But uh, this would definitely be the one right here. We are building phono phonological sensitivity and become aware of the phonological structure of a word. Now, who got that right? Maybe you got this right because maybe uh, you spotted your friend right away. Maybe you were like, you know what? This is some activity. This clapping out the name, clapping out the syllables in the name. It's something to do with phonological words and looking at that phonological structure of the word, right? Maybe you were like, yeah, it's this one here. This is a sound thing. Or maybe you got to the correct answer because you looked at you looked at these other people here and you're like, you're not my friend. You're not my friend. You're not my friend, right? Maybe you were able to be like, nope, nope, nope. Yes, no, I don't know. Maybe you want to take a look at this one again. It's from this exam here. Let's take a closer look at that exam. It's from the Texas Science of, uh, Science of Teaching Reading exam. It's a new exam. Great one to study if you're uh, in Texas. Obviously, if you're in Texas taking the Science of Teaching Reading, great one to do. Or if you're, you're doing Foundations of Reading or Reading Specialist, it's great stuff. Great exam. Look at the vocab that was in here. Um, circle time, pre-kindergarten, syllable. Uh, phoneme discrimination is being able to distinguish between uh, individual phonemes, being able to hear if something is the same or different. Uh, phonological sensitivity, phonological structure. Okay, these are all very important ideas in this question. So always after you go through the question and read it to yourself again, um, then I want you to go back and just review the vocab one more time, okay? All right? All right, let's go to the next question. 